Welcome to the ultimate guide to automating your social media content in Adobe InDesign. So yesterday, Christo posted, I'm curious what your primary tool of choice is to make multi-page documents for social media. What software do you use to make your carousels for LinkedIn and Instagram? Sure, you could use those one-off tools like Canva or Keynote, especially if you're not a designer and you just don't know how to operate Adobe. But if you want to supercharge and automate your content creation workflow, then by the end of today's video, you're going to be able to create lots of content with just a few clicks. Let's dive right into it. A quick disclaimer. Now, I'm not supported by Adobe or affiliated to Adobe, or I'm going to get paid to say any of this. The reason I prefer Adobe over these one-off tools like Figma or Canva or whatever that keynote, whatever that thing is, is because Adobe brings the power of dynamic link and integration, which you're going to see in a second. And that's why those one-off tools just don't cut it. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, a quick background. Now, I developed this framework and workflow and automation because I work in a very, very fast-paced environment and I have multiple people working with me on a project from illustrators to composite artists. And I needed a way to execute lots of content very quickly. For the purpose of this tutorial, let's imagine that you have your own podcast. And every time you record a podcast, you want to put out an Instagram carousel or, you know, create a PDF that you can put on LinkedIn, which is multi pages. So first, let's just have a quick look at what the end state is going to look like. This is a PDF that I've exported, which has three different carousels. Each row represents one carousel that you could put on Instagram as images, or you could export as PDF as you're seeing on the screen. And I'm going to teach you both how to export as images or how to export as PDFs. Now, this PDF has three different carousels, but I'll also teach you how to separate them out. So we're going to go through the whole process one by one. If you'd like to follow along, you can download all the files from the description below. Now, either you are a one-off trying to do this all by yourself, or you have a team of people supporting you, this workflow will work seamlessly in both those contexts. Now, I prefer having everything accessible on all devices and having multiple contributors at multiple locations, and I like to have all the flexibility. So set up your folders on the cloud. Now, my preference is Dropbox, but you could pick OneDrive or Google Drive, whatever you like. You can add the contributors to your Dropbox folder or your Google Drive folder or OneDrive folder. Here's an example of the folder structure that we're going to use. Now, I have dedicated folders for all the content. I have an AI folder for Illustrator files. I have a data folder for collecting all sorts of data content. I have an images folder where if I have got the images of the podcast guests, I can drop them in there. Then I have a PSD folder for, you know, if those images need to be composited, they need to be cropped out of their background. So I have a dedicated folder for that. And then I have an output folder. So at the end of this automation, you want to output your images or your PDFs. You can have that all go to the output folder. And for the purposes of this tutorial, we're going to leverage Google Sheets to bring all our content together. And then finally, I have the InDesign file set up in the root directory. So let's go step by step. So the first thing we did was set up the Dropbox folder, create the right containers and drop the right kind of content in those containers. So everything is organized and everything is streamlined. And the process can be replicated more easily because everything is sort of set up. Now. I've just taken a simple Google Sheet and what I've done is at the very top, I've listed out, you know, the guest name, the company, the website, the podcast subject, the podcast summary, and this is just lorem ipsum text. Then I've got, you know, a quote that maybe something that the podcast guest might have said. All my PSD files associated with the project, my you know, Illustrator files, if that's the case, and then any images that, you know, the guest might have provided or, you know, reference images that were used in the podcast episode if you were doing it in a YouTube format. Now, I've listed out, let's say, three podcast episodes here. I've got, you know, the first guest was 
grow dough. The second guest was happy riddles. And the third guest was blue toss. Just to show you how the whole process would work. The advantages there are you can have somebody helping you fill out this content, transcribing your videos, whatever your workflow is. You can even have the podcast guest jump into the Google sheet and fill out their details, their name, their website, and so on, whatever your workflow is going to be. So the first step was setting up a shared folder on the cloud. The second step is to take the episodes that you've recorded, the content that you would eventually want to see in the carousel, put into the Google Sheet. And then what we're going to do is when we actually go into Adobe InDesign to actually design the carousel, we're going to connect these data points to the file. Now, if you need a more in-depth tutorial on how to set up CSV file to connect to InDesign, there's a lot of tutorials on YouTube that you can watch to learn that. But in a nutshell, all you're doing is you're separating each episode by row. Then you're adding columns for all the information that you're going to want to have in your design file. Once you're done populating your data in the Google Sheet, all you're going to do is go to File and go Download and download this as a dot. CSV in the root directory that you created earlier. So when we go into the root directory that we had set up earlier, you can see that the podcast automation.csv is now sitting right next to the InDesign file. So now you've set up the Dropbox folder, you've set up the Google Sheet, and you've downloaded the Google Sheet as a .csv file and put it right next to the InDesign file in the root directory that you set up earlier. Now, in the next step, all I've done is set up an InDesign file where the page size is 3000 pixels by 3000 pixels. And all I've done is gone into the pages panel in InDesign and shut off all document pages to shuffle. I've shut that off. And that allows me to take the five pages and connect them together. And by sticking those pages together, I can have a view of what it would look like in an Instagram carousel, or if I export this as a PDF and put it on LinkedIn. Now I've actually already set up this file and you can actually see what it looks like once the data merge has already been linked, but don't sweat it. This is actually a pretty simple step. All you're actually doing is you're going up to window, you're going down to utilities and you're clicking on this data merge option there. Once you click on that, you're going to get this flyout menu. In this flyout menu, you can actually see that my CSV columns are actually already populated. And it's actually very simple to do. All you do is you click on the hamburger menu and you hit select data source and you select the file that's sitting in the root directory that you downloaded earlier from Google Sheets. Once you do that, it's going to get populated in this flyout panel. And now, depending on the number of categories, the kind of content that you've linked to that CSV, it's going to show up here. I'll put this data merge panel to the side here for a second. Now, all I've done is put three frames, which represent the images areas, and then I've added some text fields. Okay. And you'll, you'll see how they work in a second. So all you do is once you've set up a frame, all you do is you go to the data merge flyout panel and you just select the field that you want InDesign to pull the content from. It's actually that simple. So then so the first one, I wanted this to be a PSD. And for the second placeholder, I actually want this to be the AI file. And then for the last box, I actually want it to be an image. What is this PSD file? What is this image file? And what is this AI file? What I wanted to do was I wanted to have some sort of a pattern and you could have whatever artwork. You could have an illustrator working with you and helping you, or you've actually sat down and made something in Illustrator that you want to pull into this automation. And then the second thing is, you know, for each podcast guest that you bring on the show, you actually want to crop them out of the background so it's consistent with your look and feel. I'm just showing you all of this just so that you can see that you are easily able to pull an AI file, a PSD file, and an image file with the help of an automation. The advantage of the dynamic link, it, which if some of you know, is that if you go change the original file, it's going to reflect across the cloud documents. We'll come back to that in a second. So for the sake of this example, the first tile in my carousel is going to be PSD file, which has the image of the guest cropped out from the background. So I'm going to just select 
this first box and select PSD from my data merge panel. And now InDesign knows that this box is going to be a container for that PSD file. Now linking frames to images, PSDs or AI is pretty straightforward, but how do you do the text that you can see on the screen? Now what you're seeing on the screen is already done, but I'll show you an example. Let's grab the text tool and I'll draw a text box. And I'm gonna select, let's say, font size as 100, just for the sake of the example. And I'll just say name. And all I'm doing is once I select that text box, I'm just gonna go into the data merge panel and whatever content I want to be populated in this text box, I just click on that label in the data merge panel, and that's it. And once I do that, it's gonna look like what you're seeing up here. I've already populated it with company name, you know, a website, the, the guest name. I've even added, you know, a podcast subject line. What's the name of the podcast? What's the subject line? A summary of the podcast. All this content is in the Google sheet, which we downloaded as a CSV. And then finally, you know, maybe a quote that the host might've said, and then we just dragged and dropped the guest name once again at the bottom here, just so that, you know, when the quote appears, the guest name also appears again. So now you've set up the file and you basically told InDesign that in the first frame, I want it to be a PSD. In the second frame, I want it to be, you know, the AI file. In the last frame, I want it to be an image. And in this, in these different text boxes, I want it to be the guest name, the, the podcast title, the summary, and so on. All you're going to do now is if I hit that preview button in the data merge panel, as so, it's going to auto populate and pull all that content in. And now you set up the first carousel and here you can actually go and select these individual text boxes and set up character styles or paragraph styles, which I've already done, which are going to be really helpful because once you actually export and create hundreds and hundreds of assets, then you can control the look and feel of the text boxes and styles by just updating the character and paragraph styles. So let's do the final step. All you're doing is now in the data merge panel there at the top right, there is a little bit of an automation button. Once you hit that button, it's going to output the file as so. All the content is sitting in the cloud where multiple contributors can help and support you, or you could do this alone all by yourself. So now once you have these multiple carousels set up, let's say you wanted to just you're like, you know what, actually, I want to make sure that all the names are in the color red. So all you do is you go to your character style, which I've set up. So the guest name, I'm going to open that and I'm going to say character color for all the guest names be red. And boom, in one click, you've updated all the artworks dynamically with the red name. And I'm like, you know what, actually, I actually don't like this text style that I'm using for the quote. I just open up my uh, quote paragraph style and I go into basic character formats. And instead of Helvetica, I'm like, I actually want this to be Baskerville. So I'm just going to go and select Baskerville and hit OK. And as you can see, in two clicks, I was able to update multiple artworks for multiple carousels in just a few easy clicks. Once you're satisfied with your artwork and you're like, this looks perfect, this is exactly what I wanted, all you do is go to File, Export, and you have multiple options. You could either export all of these as individual images, which you could use in Instagram, or you could export this as a PDF. And I've actually already gone ahead and exported it as separate images and as a PDF. So let's take a look at that. Once you export that file as individual pages in a PDF format, it's going to, what's going to happen is it's going to take all of that content and output it to a single PDF. But what you actually want to do is separate out the different podcast episode carousels. That's very easy. Again, open up that PDF in Adobe Acrobat like I have here. You're going to select the content pertaining to one episode, and you're just going to hit that extract button. So Adobe Acrobat is going to output it as a separate PDF. Now, once you have the PDF isolated for that episode, you have two options. You could export either this 
two images from Adobe Acrobat or save this as a PDF, which you can upload to LinkedIn. Now, I totally understand this can be quite overwhelming for somebody who's trying to do it for the first time. I actually ran through this tutorial because I had very little time. But for those folks who are familiar with the Adobe Creative Cloud and Creative Suite and have used InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator extensively, there is no better way to automate your content workflow than this. And remember, I, oh, one more thing. I, I totally forgot this one more thing. So let's say, you know, you've, you've created this, uh, you've automated all that content. It's all ready. But you're like, you know what? I actually want to update this image. So now all you do is you open up that Illustrator file. And let's say you're like, you know what? I actually don't want this to be yellow. I actually want this to be green. And I actually want the outer circle to be yellow. Now, all I do is hit save. And now when I go back to InDesign, it's going to say the file has been updated and I open up the links panel and it's going to show me a little sign saying that something has changed with this file. I select that file and I hit refresh. And as you can see, the artwork has been updated, which now matches the previous artwork. Now that is the biggest advantage of using the Adobe Creative Cloud and suite to automate your content creation workflow where everything is editable, dynamic, and you can use multiple people to support you, or you can do this all by yourself. And it's super fast and easy. The only downside is you have to know how to operate InDesign, Photoshop, and Illustrator if those are the additional tools that you're gonna be using for this. If there are more specific questions that you might have for me, please leave them in the comment section below and I will be happy to address them. So there you have it. To the fans of Chris Doe and Chris Doe, how to automate your content creation in Adobe InDesign. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.